Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hear there's some, uh, some work going on upstairs in the cottage. Better go and see what's going on. All right. All right. What are you up to? Are you putting those other noggins in? Yeah. Oh yeah, you need some yeah, you need them, passable to screw to. Yeah. That's in that side. yeah. Morning Steve, you alright? How are you doing? Not bad, not bad. <laughs> you want candy camera? Yeah, sorry, I just put put the camera straight in your face without even asking. You don't mind, do you? No. Just make sure I'm not bending over at the same Right, so what are you doing, Dad? Uh, put that plasterboard in your bedroom. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> we established that. Well, no, cut it, some, uh, you're cutting the corner off. Cutting the corner so it goes up. Oh, the... it's going to go up in that corner there. Yeah. Right, okay. So this is, I've never done this before. I don't really know what to do. It's very easy job. Oh, right, okay. You can play well, watch and learn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right, that was easy. Oh, I see. Yeah, score it that side, score it that side. All right, lovely. I hope there's no more sleep. No, I've got to go down again. Why, what do you need? A big f***ing drill to put in a bit to drill the holes through. A big A big, a big yeah, onion, so you've got to that out as well. <laughs> Right, that's my plug socket. That'd be okay. Right, have you got one of those special um, yeah. screw bits that goes straight in and doesn't go straight through? You want to step here, you Steve? Well done. <laughs> Are you just cutting another piece, Dad? Yeah, off that corner. Right. So far, they've managed to do the whole end wall. What, which way? Oh, this way. You're coming around this corner now, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Plus, over here, you're going to have um, that stone, that brick wall is going to be exposed there. So, you've got just enough a bit of gap to get a bit of plaster down there. Where's the soul? Do you want me to get it for you? Now let me hold this bit here. Hello everyone and welcome to the cottage on a rather gloomy looking rainy afternoon. We're currently being showered with um, sands from the Sahara Desert. They're all obviously being picked up by a weather system and scattered across most of Europe. So um, uh, we, we did have like quite a lot of orange haze in the air. Uh, and that actually has inspired me today because um, for the last two days, the whole place has just had this sort of orange glow and uh and i'm trying to think of an animal that i could paint to, to to make a print to sell on the website um so and i thought well what's orange we've got chickens um red squirrels um uh, but then i thought one of my favorite animals of all time is is the fox or um in france they call it a renard uh renard i think something like that so today i am drawing a fox at the, at the moment I'm kind of halfway through the pencil drawing. Uh, I'll show you that now. Now, the reason I haven't actually, well, really done a lot of painting on camera is because I don't really have a way to hold the camera. So at the minute I've got a sort of, um, I'm holding the camera. I'm looking at the painting through the camera because obviously it's blocking my view. So it's actually uh, like the hand-eye coordination, I can't do it because obviously, yeah, I'm looking at it through the camera at the minute. So if I kind of, if I angle the camera like this, I can just kind of show you. What I've done is I've basically got a piece of um, watercolor paper. Uh, and what I do is I always have a, a clean sheet of paper just 
um, where my hand is because obviously I don't want to be smudging uh, the area with that I'm, you know, that I'm with my hands basically resting on, and also I want to keep the paper clean because obviously you do get natural oils from your hands, uh, even if you clean them all the time, uh, you will get natural oils on the paper, which will affect the painting. So, for the purposes of drawing, I'm going to be keeping this paper here to shield the paper underneath, and I'm just doing a bit of shading. Um, let's say we'll do a little bit of shading on the nose, um, and a bit of of shading here and this is going to be painted but what I think I might do is because the pencil drawing is quite pretty um, as it is I might scan it just as a pencil drawing first and then have some a limited number of prints done of just a pencil drawing and then I'm going to paint it because the thing is at the moment it looks very naturalistic it's just pencil it's lots of shading it looks very sort of natural but when I start to paint it uh, and then I sort of go in with a fine black pen and do the outlines, which will make it look very Beatrix Potter-esque. It's gonna look more like a, an illustration than, than something very natural. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and preserve it as just a drawing. Uh, I think we need to put a bit of shading there by the eye. So yeah, so that's where we're at at the minute. Just gonna do a bit of shading here. So we are back to painting. Uh, it's actually quite difficult to see this on camera. But what I've done is I've mixed up, you can see just here, a very light sort of beige color, uh, more yellow. You can see I've put a, got a bit of paper here to test it. Doing a bit of a wash over all of the fur. Um, and just to give it a bit of a base, because obviously the fox is going to be orange, but you have lighter bits of fur that will show through. So what I'm going to do is just give the whole thing a bit of a, a light wash in this colour. Um, just like that. And I do have some tissue here somewhere. Any areas that I would like to keep white, specifically here, I've got a bit of tissue, I'm just going to mop up some of the watercolour and just especially a little bit there a little bit under the chin there as well and a little bit just up here just under the ears so I want that white of the paper to show through and show the white which will be the white of the fur basically if that makes sense um, so basically as I said what I'm going to do is um, I'm putting this sort of wash on this very light wash it will dry even lighter and that will give a sort of nice creamy base so that when I start using a very fine brush, uh, it's finer than that, to start putting in the texture of the fur with darker reds and browns and things like that. Um, these, the areas that I haven't got brush strokes on, this this light colour, this lovely little sort of yellowy beigey colour, that will show through, and which gives the, um, the fur depth because basically your white we're not going to use white paint to do watercolors so the white the white and the light colors we want to show through from the paper and the lighter colors so we do the lighter colors and the finer washes first and just slowly build it up layer by layer um, and you can if you want say I wanted this area to be a bit darker I won't do it so much with this because 
You've got to be a bit more crisp with these colours, but say here, I can actually pull some more pigment into it, like a wet area here like this, which will give you a bit of a darker, a darker look. But I don't really want that just yet. I want to keep the paint as dry as possible so that I can get more of a texture because otherwise with fur, if you do these really wet washes, you just end up with just a mess. So you've got to build your layers up very slowly, layer by layer, just little by little. And that way you get, that's what basically what Beatrix Potter's technique was. You, you start off with the very lightest colors, very light washes, sponging off areas you want to keep white, taking away because it will mop up. Um, and, and yeah, just build it up slowly. And then obviously we'll start with the, the, the slightly darker color, which is next, was probably more of a, a gold color. And what was some very, very fine brush strokes and start building up the layers of fur. And then obviously we'll use darker paint. Then again, once that layer is dry with an even finer brush and start building up um, more texture. And then we'll start adding shadows. And But yeah, obviously anything that you want to keep light, you have to leave the paper to show through first. So. We're getting there. I'll show you a bit more when I've um, made some more progress. So basically what I'm doing is um, just adding in, I've slowly been making my brush small, you can't really see it there, smaller and smaller and smaller. We're on a zero now, miniature. Uh, and I basically, I started off here with this light color and then I mixed a darker color and then I mixed a sort of orangey brown color. And I've slowly been adding more and more of this brown, this one here, the raw umber, to what was originally a burnt sienna, which is this colour. Uh, slowly adding more and more and making the brush strokes finer and finer. Adding in some darker areas here. Just building up the shading with progressively darker layers. The thing is, you have to be really patient with a drawing like this. I mean, you have to be really patient with uh, with painting like this, if you want to build up this texture, you can really put too much paint on there too much, too fast, and then you just get this horrible, blocky, flat picture. As you can see here, I'm just adding in the darker bits. And um, because I'm using such a small brush, the um, paint sort of gets put onto the paper quite quickly, so your brush dries out very quickly. So you have to keep, keep going back in and getting some more paint. The trick is not to put your brush strokes too close together. Leave plenty of space in between, so, so I'm leaving nice big gaps in between. And obviously where you've got a darker patch, which is gonna be up here. We're gonna darken that bit there. We wanna darken this area here. And yeah, so that's kind of how, how we're getting on. I haven't really done much to the, the um, cub at the minute. I'm gonna do that last, because he's a different sort of color. He's a bit paler. Young foxes don't have that bright orange coat like the adult ones do. Tail doesn't have as much orange in it, it's more sort of a cross between sort of beige, greys and blacks. But there will be some in there, so we'll put some some in. Build up a bit of colour here, I think. Yeah, and a little bit just under there. That's how we build up the texture. So once I'm kind of happy with this stage, what I'm going to do is add maybe some greys and some, um, maybe I use a bit of sepia which is sort of like a, not really a black, but not really a gray, it's sort of a dark brown paint and just add in some more shading and, and then maybe go in, never black though, I won't use black, but I'll keep it kind of quite light because what I will do after I've done this is I'll go in with a fine black artist's um, pen, very, very, with a fine nib and actually sort of outline it so it becomes more like an illustration. And if you go too heavy with the paint, too much texture, too, too dark, once you put the, the um the the outlines on it can become a bit grungy if you look at beatrix potters they're kind of light they've got a bit of texture they're not too dark they've got enough just so that you know you can see it's 3d uh, and then really what brings it to life is the outline so we won't go too crazy and um, we want it to kind of be in the style of beatrix potter but not sort of not they're not going to be these aren't characters they are real Foxes a bit more naturalistic and like her early work before she started doing the little books because when she started illustrating her books her artwork became a bit more cartoony uh, not always sometimes it was a bit more detailed depends upon probably what mood she was in but um, I want this to be in the style of Beatrix Potter but not 
not a cartoon character. Okay, are you ready for the grand reveal? I, I basically finished it. I mean, as they say, most pieces of artwork I never finished, they're just abandoned. And at this point, I'm abandoning. I'm abandoning. I'm abandoning. Sorry, I can't even say tonight. So it's taken a long time, um, but it's done. I'm going to just show you now. Uh, I've done all the shading, I've done all of the pencil. Um, it's basically now uh, a case of I've got to scan it. Uh, and then I'll tweak the colors and things to make it look nice and bright and beautiful, be printed. Cause obviously you can't just take a photo of it. It needs to be scanned, it needs to be adjusted so that it can be printed um, and so that it comes out the way it is on paper. So that's a whole process I'm gonna do tomorrow. Uh, but I'm just gonna show you it now uh, so you can get an idea of how it looks. And then I'm gonna go to bed. And here it is. Let me just move my chair. It looks a bit dark on camera cause it's uh, a bit dark in here basically, but. And there it is, it's basically finished. Uh, I decided because, you know, I'm not great at doing pores, I thought we well, would hide them with a bit of grass. Um, so it, it, I think it looks nice. Um, in real life, it does look a lot brighter uh, and less grungy, but I don't know why on this camera it doesn't look, doesn't look as good. But once it's scanned and, um, and uh, ready to be printed, it's gonna look fantastic. So um, yeah, I just wanna say, um, there you go. I didn't show the whole process because I can't film and paint at the same time, it's really difficult and I haven't got a rig as I said earlier so hopefully I can get like a camera rig so that I can actually film the whole process and do like a time lapse uh, in future but for now, there we go, it's done, a fox, mummy fox and baby fox, um, just in time for spring so there you go. Just in the chateau, and I found a little baby mouse. Come back, come back, come back, I'm not gonna hurt you. Oh, it's okay, you're safe here, there's no pussy cats. Oh, you're so cute. Do you have food? Do you want some food? A little moosey. See, that's the thing. Now there's no cats in the chateau, the little mice have started to come back. A little cutie. Hey, what's your name then? What do we do with you? Don't jump. Oh, he's a little darling. Aren't you? So, just if anyone's just joined, I've just found a little baby mouse in the chateau. And because there's no cats living in the chateau anymore, obviously the mice have come back. So what do I do with this little baby? It's only little. Maybe you want some food. Don't jump. Don't jump. It's quite high up. This reminds me of when we first moved here. There was a little mouse that ran out and greeted me. You are one confused little mouse. The thing is mice, they're quite fragile, actually. It's quite um, quite easy to uh, to hurt them. You definitely are a bit stressed out. I think we're going to put you somewhere safe, okay? But just say say hello to the viewers. Right, we put the camera down. I'm going to put you somewhere nice and safe. Well, hello, Florian. No, no. This Welcome is back. Cold. Sorry, Florian's freezing cold because it's cold in the chateau and he's just shivering, so I gave him my coat and now he doesn't like it. Really you don't appreciate my coat. Tiny uh, coat. It's a bit no, small, actually. Okay. Yeah, it was a bit slimmer when I bought that. So. <laughs> it's not too tiny? No, it suits you. It yeah, suits you better than it suits me. Yeah, but I think they're meant to be like that. That's the style. Uh, right, so I'm going to pass you the camera and I'm going to show all the viewers what's just arrived. Too much things. Lots of things. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hide behind this mountain of boxes. Okay, so I, I'm quite happy to announce that the doingitourselves.com website 
the online shop where you can buy my artwork, um, prints, uh, and sometimes, very rarely, but there will be original artworks on there as well. We've got a huge box coming on Monday, which has got the fox prints, the ink and the crown print, and also the thank you cards. That's arriving on Monday. It's Friday, so that's three days away. Uh, so that means that all the orders, any, any of the orders that we get, uh, will be shipped out next week, um, which is really exciting. So this is something I've wanted to do for a very long time, Florian, very long time. I just haven't had the uh, creative energy to do it, but things are changing now here. So, so what do we have in this box? This is um, the B prints, and this one is, they're also B prints as well. I think we've got some heron in there. Um, but I thought I'd do, I'll open this and I'll show you. Me trusty posh, posh, what do you call this? Document, oh, document folder. Yeah, document. I had this since 2008, back when they were cheaper. They're a bit expensive now. Uh, here we go, so what we've got in here, we've got a selection of artworks. Some of these, I will show you them on screen, uh, the actual digital files, so you can really get an idea of how they're gonna look when they're printed. Because although we have the heron and the bee here, uh, we don't have all the other ones. So, first of all, which will be on the website for sale, is Peter Rabbit. That is an original replica painting done by me in watercolour. That is on the website for sale. There's only one. When it's gone, it's gone. We also have on the website, we have the Tailor of Gloucester, the mouse from the front cover of the book, a replica in watercolour. There's only one. When that's gone, that's gone as well. Obviously, you get the idea. And um, we've got Squirrel Nutkin. Uh, he's also on the website as well. Um, for sale, um, but obviously those original artworks, when they're gone, they're gone, there's only one. They will be signed, they will be packaged, and each of these, each of these, believe it or not, will come with um, one of the prints signed for free as well, possibly two, I'm not sure, I'll put, I'll put two in there. Um, so each of these will come with a signed print um, as a little extra. So what else have we got? We have, which I painted literally two days ago, we have the mummy fox and baby cub. And also we have this, this is an artwork that I did 10 years ago. It's actually not done in watercolor, it's done it in ink. The only problem is the original, uh, it got damaged and there's actually a sort of like um, bits of paint and stuff on the actual paper that I can't get off. But the print, I managed to digitally remove that. So it's crisp and pristine in the print. We also have this, this was done for a book illustration, the book never came to fruition, um, but um, that is an illustration of a heron from the lake. Um, and that is actually one of the prints and they're printed on really nice, because you get a lot of prints and they're printed on sort of paper. So they're quite flimsy. Uh, and I wanted something a bit more sturdy, you know, something that's really gonna stand the test of time. So they're printed on this beautiful mat with a slight satin sheen, a bee. Now this was a Christmas present I did for Ernest when he was a baby. Um, and it's actually in his nursery, the original. I'll show you a shot of that now, uh, the original. Um, but this is a print that you can buy. Um, it's also on the same thick, thick card. Uh, these are 21 by 21 centimeters square. Um, I'll put on the screen now what that is in inches if you're in the US. Um, so, you know, if you do buy one and you want to buy a frame in anticipation, you know which size it is. Uh, we also have the thank you cards. Uh, this is... This is the original thank you card, bigger than the original. The printed version is actually half that size. Um, and so everyone that buys a print will get a doing it ourselves thank you card. And on the back is a handwritten note. I mean, obviously I can't write a handwritten note for every single purchase. But what I have done is I hand wrote one and I had it printed. Uh, so it's in my handwriting, it's signed by me. So thank you for your purchase from the doing it ourselves online store. All the best, Michael. So everyone gets a card. Each print, we don't have the tissue paper right now, that'll be next week. So each, each print will be wrapped in tissue paper um, to protect it so that it's not sliding around in the envelope, which could damage the print. So they'll be wrapped in tissue paper to protect them. Uh, each one will be, uh, the tissue paper will be sealed with a little sticker. We have these little doing it ourselves um, stickers to, 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 to close up the packaging and to keep the tissue paper you know, wrapped up. Lots and lots of envelopes, there we go. <laughs> There's four prints available right now. There are more on their way, um, but what I wanna do is just put a limited selection for now um, and see how it goes. 
Now they're all signed. The first 100 of each print will be numbered one to 100. After that, they'll just be signed and they'll be sort of like second editions. They won't be numbered. It's Friday today. The video is going out today. So this is, this is actually us almost live. Uh, we're gonna go over to the guest house now where Ryan is currently putting the finishing touches to the website um, to make it live when this video is live. So should we go over to the guest house now uh, and we'll go and see Ryan and see him putting the finishing touches to the website and, and then hopefully, when this video is finished, um, you can go straight over to the website and have a look. So yeah, let's go and see Ryan. Are you filming as well, Ryan? I am currently so filming. So show me the website. Right, so here, well here it is, yeah. Oh, I love it. First of all, if you go to the home page, all right, I go home. So as you come onto the website, first of all, you'll see this. If we scroll down, show them that. So first of all, we've got this is the section of the signed prints. We've got the fox. We've got the signed crown and ink print, uh, the bee print, uh, and the heron print. Ryan, you've done really good. <laughs> well, so you're yes, the one who made the so prints. Yes, yesterday and we were choosing all the colours, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we've got the cream background, like a watercolour. Basically, originally, up until yesterday. This looked completely different. Yeah. It wasn't it? Yeah, it was like it was like a black background and it had a picture of the chateau. Yeah, and with, yellow with writing. your yellow writing, your trademark yellow writing from, from yeah. YouTube. But we uh, um, we yeah. we completely redesigned the whole website yesterday, didn't we? Yeah. So we've got yeah, so the good. first section is signed print. So if you yeah. click, click on say the fox um, and scroll down. So what you can do is if you hover over the image with your cursor Mouse, yeah. you can actually zoom in and see the uh, images yeah. in really high detail yeah uh, and then you've got the item here yeah and say I'm... normally sorry to interrupt you michael yeah normally there'd be a description here uh, and we're going to write that now someone yeah someone forgot yeah so the, the, i've got to write the description but it'll be the description one for all of the prints okay they just have the name of the print and then okay, the description perfect. will be sort of generic that tells perfect. you about how they're printed yep. and what yep. sizes yep. they are that's fine um, so these uh so these these are the prints here <gasps> they are wow that's the real size of them it's like the real thing no that's the real size of them although this one the fox one is actually a4 so it's yeah. wider but let me it's just, a bigger print let me just say we 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 we, we couldn't actually make them this size because it take up the whole screen, so you haven't got on the real size. No, but, but if you click on if you click on that one, yeah, and then you hover over the picture, you'll be able to see it bigger yeah. than life size. Yeah, so you'll you be can, able to see all the details. You can yeah. check that if you like it or not. Uh, so, how would you then purchase one of these now? Oh, well, you just go you on uh, add to cart. Add say, to I cart. want to buy the heron. Yeah. So yep. it's been added to cart, so, so you can even the... click on view cart. So what have you got in your cart, Ryan? What are you buying? Uh, I already had something in my cart. Oh, you've got I a had... signed B print. Yeah, I have two in my cart. Yep, so, and then, so basically, the total that you see here uh, is including the VAT. Including and, shipping as well, and and everything. It includes shipping and everything. packaging as yep. well. And you, you either go straight to check out or view cart, just to, just to see it again. Yeah, and with this Modify website, it. with this website, you can pay securely through, we have, a, a, we have a, an e-commerce site that deals with all the payments for us so yeah we, so well, it's, it's all called, secure it's called, it's called stripe it's basically the biggest the biggest the biggest company that deals with like credit card payments online yeah so you can pay by uh, all major cards yeah uh, mastercard visa yeah credit cards or, or paypal or you can pay by paypal yeah so there you go right, so proceed to check out let's do, let's just go for it <laughs> yeah, and then but oh look, so you go. So obviously, you fill in your big details and everything yep. like that. There you go. Card details or whatever you want to, uh, and these then we'll get a notification uh, with all of your details, and then we can have it shipped out ASAP. Yep. So I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget to go and check out the website. Um, even if you just just want to have a little look, um, because everything's always on on there now and available. And um, and I shall see you in the next video very soon because we're almost finished the plasterboard in the cottage. So. Yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.